Welcome back to the Talk Past podcast, of course, kings, queens, and knights of all identities. Uh, for this episode, we are going to discuss how to get into reenactment of all sorts. So, of course, my co-host. Buckle up and strap... Well, no, that didn't work. Hold on. Strap me in and buckle up. Let's, uh, I am the war, key, the war queen, a.k.a. Red Iron Riot. And... Y- yeah. And this is actually, like I was about to say, this is actually, I think, a topic that is very important because you sometimes you don't know where to start when you decide, hey, I want to get into this and because it looks like fun. I, I went to the Ren Fair and there was this dude wearing a full set of armor and it looks so cool. And ah, uh. Of course, World War One, World War II, uh, 90s reenactment, if you want to reenact the 90s. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, isn't that what? Well, no, Str- Stranger Things is '80s reenactment. Uh, South Park did it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the so, only episode, the only episode to feature a Marilyn Manson skit. This was 1998, and they had like an Iceman that was thought out from like two or so months previous. I so, remember that. I don't, but it's been a while. Yeah, they put him in like a little enclosure, which is nothing but like a couple months ago stuff. So you get like, <laughs> ah, saw the sign, and you had uh, uh, sports and stuff from that. It was it was amusing. I think they were making fun of Encino Man or something. It makes me think of uh, you know. I feel like the Futurama, the one Futurama episode, is a little better. Just the image of Fry sitting in a dark apartment. Or sitting, you know, sitting in an armchair in his underwear, just groove into Baby Got Back. And Sir Mix a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry, I watched, I, they, they, I think Sci-Fi was running a marathon this last weekend, and I caught some of it, and you forget how good Futurama is sometimes. Yeah, I'm, I don't care in any way, shape, or form for The Simpsons. However, Futurama was pretty good. I don't seek it out, but if it's on, it's good. It's one of those, if it's on, hey, good times. Yeah. Um, but this back- is okay too. But go ahead. Yeah. So I was gonna say back to South Park. As as uh, blue as South Park is, I think it definitely point. It's a good start for understanding what you really want. To, you know, if you're looking to get into reenactment, what you need and what you need is a group of friends who want to do it with you. I think that's like the most important thing, honestly. Precisely. To it to an example. Ex- down something of a list that we can maybe mentally create of, of how to go about doing this. So obviously, first and foremost, uh, you, you, you got to want to do it, mm-hmm. right? For uh, sure. A lot, of, a lot of people want to do something like this to some extent, but feel like they don't have the outlet. A lot of people I noticed in our group and others are kind of like high anxiety people. And these are, you know, the cosplay people. And mm-hmm. these outlets... They want to get involved in, but maybe that that anxiety, that sort of personal stigma kind of prevents you. Um, but I mean, it, it's really easy to get into reenactment or living history or cosplay, but it depends. Um, what do you want to do? Like, I guess, well, because we're, you know, medieval content, let's stay focused on the medieval part. Precisely, because that's what we know best. <laughs> um, so speaking of that, so when I came down, uh, of course, I did the Harry Potter thing with the group that we're in. Uh, so that for me was kind of like a launching point, how I got into that. Uh, my roommate at the time tried to stop me from doing it because he was very selfish and <laughs> wanted everything to be about him. But I was curious. So I'm like, hey, mind if I go to one of the rehearsals? And they're like, yeah, sure. And I spoke to... The director, who at the time, uh, there were three directors, but I spoke to to just one of them uh, because she approached. And um, she's like, do you want to be involved? We need randos to just walk around the board. And I'm <laughs> like, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, but then, of course, the director of the, the festival that we do was like, hey, do you want to do this as well? I'm like, yeah, sure, sure. So um, you, got it, you got into it through your acquaintances yes. pretty much. So say, you know, you're just at, you know, you're at a Ren Fair for a day and 
you're lo you're watching folks walk around and it's pretty cool. You know, I, I want to say the, first, the the most important thing to do to get started is just ask, you know? Yeah. You know, I mean, I, if you're, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, you know, like, I think I, I'm pretty sure at least everyone in cast has probably had a moment where somebody's like, this is so cool. How do you get into this? And, you know, especially when during rehearsals, we'd go to get lunch at, lo at, at local, at local restaurants during, during lunch, you know, lunch breaks and rehearsals. And, you know, we're tromping in, in various, you know, at a, at a point we're all wearing at least half of our garb. Yeah. And it definitely, uh, uh, <laughs> you get some stares. Right. I remember uh, during the show month, I was still getting rides from Dave. And uh, this was prior to having a car. And we were both in full getup. And I think this was actually King Arthur year, the return to Avalon. And we stop at McDonald's because he stops at McDonald's. And... The, the girl at the front just kept staring at us. <laughs> wouldn't say anything, wouldn't do anything. It's like, I guess, I mean, just operating on like, what, two brain cells? Um, <laughs> you, just, it's kind of mean, but but it's just kind of how it felt. Um, so like, just staring at us. But, but otherwise, people tend to know who we are, though, in our community. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people do ask, and they're like, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? And we're like, oh, Bibbidi bop, babbidi boo, robble owl. And, um, but yeah, no, if you all want to do this, a good wait, <clears throat> a good Cheetos, a good way to, uh, get into it is go. Go to the festival, go to the fair, go to an SEA event, go to whatever, and ask, uh, uh engage with the, the group. Or, uh, alternatively, seek out a Facebook or an Instagram. Mm. Um, message them. We want you involved. We want you to, to join. We don't know how many people would become our best friends, but don't because they didn't join, right? So just uh, ask us. Uh, come out, uh, do that, and uh, that's probably the best way to sort of uh, break the ice. Mm -hmm. you, you know, get your foot in the door sort of sort of thing. Because, yeah. yeah, you know, you ask, like, like you said, they'll probably point you to a Facebook, or they'll say, you know, hey, come by, you know, I would like if somebody at the fair had asked me to be like, you know, come by the tavern at the end of the, if you're still here at the end of the day, if you like us, are you going to be here till the end of the end of the fair day? They'll be like, yeah, yeah. So come to the tavern at the end of the day. I'll introduce you to some of the other folks who are a little better at this than me. And they'll, they'll give you some, you know, some tips if you want to get started. Exactly. Or, or beforehand, you know, whenever, if, if, you know, if you're on a time crunch, literally just ask. Mm -hmm. But I'm um, also going back to that first question. Oh, go ahead though. First. I was going to say, cause you know, well, if not, you know, well, I'm just here. I'm, I'm actually headed out the gate and it's like, well, check our Facebook, uh, message the Facebook and they'll be able to point you the right direction. It's just, all you got to do is take that first step and ask that first question. How do I get into this? Exactly. Um, but of course, going back to that first uh, question that we, we mentioned, what do you want to do? I think that is a very specific question that has several branches that we mm -hmm. group as well as the channel as a whole moving forward does. So what do you want to do? Do you want to do reenactment, which is what we do? Mm -hmm. Do you want to do, say, say, like film and theater, which we also do, but to a lesser extent? <laughs> channel will be be more film but um do you want to do living history which is also um, obviously reenactment is you get up in your garb historical or not our our show is not historical in any way shape or form um nope. <laughs> but living history does try to three words do... three words kilts in falkirk Ugh. Yeah. um which which is a very fascinating time frame as well as battle but uh living history is centered around exactly what the words say, living history, trying to do what they did as accurately as possible. And for some people, uh, that's more enticing. Um, whether you're, you're a seamstress or seamster, or you just want to, you know... Try something new. Yeah, you, you just want to wanna appear and do as they did, rather than deal with crowds up front as we do, or even combat. Um, there's always that aspect with film. Um, that's that's a little bit more difficult because film is yeah. difficult. 
Um, there's, there's, there's a lot of, you know, red tape that you got to go through on film as well as theater. Um, I've not had many good experiences doing theater. Uh, but then again, our community that has those theaters are very elitist and it's very much a for us by us community. So if you can get into a very open and welcoming community for theater that specifically does plays like you would have of those time frames, like Roman plays or, or whatnot, I think that would be a great thing. <laughs> Our show is theater in the rounds uh, to an extent. Or you could think about theater in terms of the, the, the shows that do our show, right? The Washing Well Wenches. Um, I love them wenches. The Whoever or What's. <laughs> uh, Kudu. So there's, there's a, a, a wide variety that you can, you can branch out to once you realize, do you want to do reenactment? Do you want to do film and theater? Or do you want to do living history? Then, so then you kind of find your niche. Mm -hmm. So let's kind of narrow it down to what, a little more of what we know, and that would be the reenactment and the stage combat, and yes. I guess I guess the theater in the round. So that's for our for our fair. That's you know most of what we do. We're we have the human combat chess match. We have, and you can be a, if you're a cast member in that. You're not only you know, committing to fight with a weapon on a sta on a stage in front of people, you're also committing to the improv part, the theater in the round bit of the of the fair experience. Or as if you're as, just oops, sorry, good. As much as four people on our cast don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> not, and then putting any names out there, but go ahead. But and then there's also just the experience of, you know, all oh, you just you know, just being a cast member and that is the improv and the theater in the round. And I, I know a lot of times we usually encourage people to start with just doing the cast member bit. Yeah. Because it's it's a very doing doing the fights is a very physically intensive thing. And you gotta think to yourself, am I gonna be able to do this? And just yeah. thinking about Florida in general, where we where we perform, it's tough when yeah. the weather doesn't want to cooperate. It sucks. Exactly. <laughs> and, and speaking of medieval, of course, so our show is a bit special, but uh, you also want to think about what period do you want to do? So we do the medieval period. What does that mean, though? What is, what is the medieval period to us? It might not be the same to others. So we do... Oh, jeez, what do we do? We, we basically do, like, the 500s out to, like, late 15th century? I'd say early 1400s, late 1400s. Yeah. I think before the Tudor era. At the so least. yeah, there's there's medieval and then there's Renaissance. Although I think a lot of fairs just use the term Renaissance as the catch-all. Like yeah. Yeah. So definitely it's like, you know, well, if you're at a Renaissance fair and you see people, you see a lot of ladies wearing really fancy dresses with all the ruffles and updos and... That says more your Renaissance thing, and that might not be for you, because Lord knows I don't, I am not interested in. Uh, yeah, a, a, it um, reminds me there was one year, um, one of the one of the people that don't really take. I don't know why they do the show. They don't take <laughs> it seriously. They don't seem to want to be there. It's like they're just there to socialize, kind of thing, or maybe their parents just drop them off to forget about them. Oh, um, so no judgment on the person, but. Uh, clearly, their mind is not there, right? They're not; just, they're just not present. Mm -hmm. But um, the person came dressed as this full princess Victorian outfit. Oh wow! And it was like, what, what you're wearing, you can turn around with that kind of thing. <laughs> but um, then we immediately gave her, and she completely deflated. A oh. uh, Deb, of course, made sure she had a good outfit, which was yeah. a peasant dress, and uh, she never came back. Oh. Yeah, but, so you know, for some people, it's not your thing. If you're wanting to come in like Cinderella and you know what? We're doing peasant revolts. <laughs> so that is that is important. You need to know what time period do you want to portray? Do you want to do actual medieval? Do you want to do Viking era? Do you want to do uh, middle medieval like the 1300s, which is the, the stereotypical medieval period? Yeah. Do you want to do the Tudor period, which is late 15th, 16th century, 
uh, which is getting out of the medial period, that the period I don't care for, where it's starting to become a meme of itself. Um, <laughs> well, and you want to do Renaissance, etc. So once you know, then go to that festival. Go to that fair. Go to that group's Facebook. Be like, hey, this is a Viking festival. That is your niche. Check them out. Talk to them. But know what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it might like, it, um, I can't speak to it because it's not my experience, but you know, there's the SCA. I know there's a local group in the Florida, in the Tampa area in Florida called Mythic LARP. And they do like, they're more fantasy oriented, but they seem to, they, they do a lot of stuff and you know, it's a little more all over the place. And so maybe you'll find a niche there that you find, you you enjoy. Yeah. LARP but, is a whole other thing. Yeah, uh, no totally disrespect, but um, just don't have the experience with it. Yeah. Um, I mean, that also is an outlet to LARP, um, but I can never LARP. Mm. Uh, I can't use a foam. After using a real weapon, I can't use foam. Um, <laughs> it just is weird. But in any case, so once you know what you want to do, once you know what period you want to do, and you don't have to be stuck to one period, you know, we have people who do our medieval period as well as Victorian era, as well as steampunk, as well as anime, as well as, as, well pirates. as pirates, uh, which pirates can also be medieval. Um, what kind you of, know, you know, I, I, this, I know this is way off topic, but I think that's, we, we definitely miss this on Cressy year. And I will never like, after finding out about this, this person in history and like, we didn't do this in Cressy year. Why? Um, I think it's Jean de Clisson, who is a, uh, a f either an Eng God, was she was an English woman or a French woman? Who I think she was an English woman who fought the French um, during that during the Hundred Years' War. Let me see if I can find it because I'm saying mm -hmm, as if I know. I'm uh, more of affirming your 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 talking point. A Breton noblewoman who became a privateer to avenge her husband after he was executed for treason by the French king. And uh, uh that would have been. Uh, who, which king? Which uh, which king was that? Ah, I lost this king. But apparently, that was during the era of that the Battle of Crest. would have taken place in, and it's just like, why did we not? Why did you not put this character in on the board? That would have been amazing, Christ! All right, you could have had, could have had right. the the pirate Ethel Beard, <laughs> the, the one-eyed pirate Ethel Ethel Patch. <laughs> yeah. A lot of good names. So, um, exactly. So, yeah. Rants ended, but there's like, you know, that would have been a great thing. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, of course, once you once you know what you want to do, it's a medieval medieval reenactment, as we do. Once you've got a period, a uh, medieval period. Um, and once you've got the kind of reenactment you want to do, you need to then think about, well, well that. Um, what kind of reenactment? So our show has two different kinds of reenactment. Mm -hmm. So you've got the fight cast. Yep. Now fight cast uh, is going to be something included in a lot of other living history and reenactment groups. It's kind of a, an all around thing people love using and and learning about medieval combat, uh, whether it's the fact books or just the gear and the the. <laughs> Basically, the armor and all that stuff in general, and then kind of seeing how that works. Hold that thought, <laughs> please. Hold it. Uh, I, went, I went away. <laughs> and uh, creating, creating your knight persona or a soldier, whatever, king, who knows, Viking. Mm -hmm. um, there's also uh, living history. Technically, you can lob that into what we do as improv, right? Mm -hmm. uh, improv for us. We go through improv lessons, wonderful improv instructors that we've had. Oh yeah. Um, that that go through a far more rigorous training for that than you would for fight, because it is a whole different thing to have to deal with thousands of people in character mm -hmm. than being on a thirty two by thirty two or whatever board just handling each other. Mm -hmm. I would say that for fight cast, it is honestly like 70% interact crowd interaction and the improv and then 30% fighting. Like it's yeah, really more no. than 30%, but no, that's would, what it feels like to me. I would go even less um, in terms of uh, fighting. Well, only because our, our show specifically past shows 
have been about what 30 minutes each give or take Mm -hmm. so i mean twice a day for yeah for a fighter now that's not even including the new tournament and the lane fights um Mm -hmm. a fighter on cast might if they had a feature fight they might only have what a minute minute and a half of a fight that's Mm -hmm. that's a minute and a minute and a half let's say two minutes if you want to include the melees two minutes out of your day starting (laughs) from nine or ten o'clock until six so really if you're a feature fighter the fighting is the most un it's the most minuscule part of the you what you're doing what you are doing is living history reenactment improv um you are bringing your character to life to the people um, so that brings us to that improv aspect. Do you want to just do the general cast, which is effectively living history, where you're being your character, where you're going to learn a persona, create a persona, um, and you're going to find some way to bring that to life, historically or non-historically, depending on the group, uh, for people to watch, the public, or or, or so. Um, you need to basically, do you want to just do fight? Do you want to do fight and improv? Or do you just want to do the improv? That's an important distinction. So let's say, let's say, all right, you found something you want to do. You, you're okay with the time period. You're okay with, you know, you're, you, you're going to do the fight and the improv, right? Let's say you're going to do the whole hog. So the next step is, I guess, would be the kit. Right. Yes. Yes. Or would you want to do like gar- garb? Would it be garb first and then like the kit, quote unquote? Because or... I would say, I think clothing makes you your character. Mm-hmm. So, so garb. Where do you start with the garb? Exactly. So, not a lot of people, especially in today's time, uh, who are starting out, are going to have the money or the means to get the gear and the clothing that you need to get into reenactment and living history. Specifically those two things, because obviously theater and a film that's going to be given to you. Mm -hmm. Um, For reenactment, we buy our own stuff. So that doesn't mean that you have to go out and buy it. We also have people that have been doing this for many years who have things lying around. So ask. If you're at rehearsal and you you don't even have a pair of shoes, uh, ask. Just see who has what and what sizes. We we want you to do the show. We want you to fit in, quite literally. And mm. you know it doesn't has it. Don't hesitate to just ask. Um, someone might have a tunic that you could wear and borrow for the show. Um, boots are a little bit here and there. Um, boots are boots. Shoes are usually the most expensive. Mm-hmm. And honestly, honestly, the mo- a little bit. I would say probably the most important, comp- yeah. if you, especially if you are in the fight cast. So, but you are right. The first thing you want to do is ask, because that's right. So, yeah. my recommendation: if you're going to spend money on anything, spend money on your shoes. Mm-hmm. Um, a good pair of shoes is going to last you forever. Um, like, like if you're just, but if like so. If you good pair of shoes, we use a, a lot of our staff use a lot of our cast uses sandlers just because they're 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 t- they're good shoes, they're good boots, even if they're not technically ever period. <laughs> yeah, no, they're they're son of sandlers. We will recommend uh, come hell and high water, much like with BKS um, mm-hmm. and Sterling, uh, Starfire for some others, but um, son of sandler makes the best quality boots out there. Um, they do make ankle boots. However, uh, depending on the time frame, the ankle boots might also not be period. Uh, but al- they also have what they they've got the um, I don't think it's rubber, but the you know the things on the bottom. The soles. The soles are very like for stage combat on a on a you know dirt on a dirt chessboard. The soles of the so- the Sada Sandler soles are very good. Yeah, they've got you know they've got good tread. They are very slip resistant. Like chomping through mud in sandler boots is an experience because mm-hmm. you just go exactly. Or of course, as I had mentioned previously in a uh, podcast episode, our uh, improv director made her own turn shoes, and we also had our our historian who made his own uh, anachronistic, not historically accurate boots. However, it's a lot cheaper to make your own. 
Uh, so there's always that outlet. But that's the important thing in terms of garb. Ask if you cannot get it yourself because you shouldn't be expected to. Um, in all mm. honesty, you, you should be... You, we should allow people to just have hand-me-downs first year if on things they can't get. Mm -hmm. um, and things that you can, I would suggest... Yeah, and, and, you know, actually, another good thing about the Sandler boots, and I've had this experience, and I don't know, I'm sure other people in cast have, if you have a local shoe repair place, like, I, I went to the, uh, the Mennonites in yeah. town, they can, you know, if you're, if the boots need repairs, and you don't want to resend, send them back to Sandler, send a Sandler, because from what I understand, that can be a little, uh, laborious mm -hmm. to get that done though because of the quality of the boots they can be resold quite easily yeah and that's very important for you know if you invest if you invest invest the money in a good pair of boots that's you only need to spend it once honestly yeah but of course in terms of some of sandlers that might be good for reenactment you want to check your group for their rules check what the group's rules are in terms of accuracy so yeah. some of sandlers is not good for living history. Uh, Son of Sandler's is not good for historical accuracy. However, our group does not have any semblance of historical accuracy, so they're great. Uh, they would be great for LARPing, of course. They'd be great for any reenactment that is... Uh, also, they'd be good for SCA. Um, mm -hmm. So any reenactment that doesn't have but strict rules on accuracy, uh, definitely go for Son of Sandler's. They're expensive, but you'll never buy another pair of shoes again. Mm -hmm. And this is this is the point where it's gonna sound okay. This is definitely a little chintzy, but if you're um, if, if instead you're just you're just doing like the improv cast, and you're still not sure if you want to, uh, you know, do do this full or full time thing. Uggs. I hate to say it. I hate to say it, but was it was it was it Uggs? I can't remember that type of that one type of shoe that they recommended sometimes. Yeah, I'm not 100. percent I mean, there are Minnetonkas. The Minnetonkas. That's it. That was that's what I'm saying. The Minnetonkas. So, quick historical sidebar, funny little anecdote. Um, there was one kid who used to be interested in what we do, and then just he went through puberty, and and that changed. Um, it happens. It happens. Uh, it's not for everybody. But um, he came and bought really bad quality shoes, very mm. cheap, very low quality boots. Mm -hmm. And he was on, I don't know if he was fight cast that year as well as general. He may have just been general, but um, his shoes tore up first day. First day of show, they were gone. So it's okay. If something like that happens, we understand. We'll just put, I think we, we basically just uh, stitched up some burlap to put on his sneakers. Yeah, I think that's what what happened with that. That that got him through for the weekend. Um, I mean, that's what has to happen. That's what has to happen. Don't mm -hmm. fret. No one should ever be made to feel bad because they can't afford something or mm -hmm. because they can't acquire something. In all honesty, I mean, I've seen SCA stuff with people wearing Nikes. So, <laughs> and you laugh, oh, yes. but, you know, you yeah. get what you can get. And our show specifically, I notice, although we can be catty and snarky, we still go out of our way to make sure the new people and people that don't have can have something. Because um, we, we, we may not pride in historical accuracy, but we at least pride in presentation. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's a lot easier to find a good, a good pair of Minnetonkas that you can mm -hmm. cut up and make into really basic looking boots than yes. it is to find a uh, son of Sandler boots. Exactly. And if you get Minnetonkas, cut the fringe off. Yeah. The it's only painful thing to do it. The only thing you really have to uh, worry about with the Minnetonkas is that they are suede leather. They're not waterproofed. Mm -hmm. So if you're in an environment that is going to be damp, uh, you, you might still want to try and invest in the Sandlers. Yeah, my first four years were in Minnetonks from ankle high boot, ankle high shoes that had a zipper in the back for some reason, um, which I did not know had a zipper until I bought them. Oof. So, oof. Oh, yeah. but anywho, nobody yeah. noticed. Yeah. Um, to the the knee high boots, yeah, they do not have any sort of protection from the weather. Um, they're they look nice, they're good, but you know, yeah, definitely yeah. think about that. If right. if it has if it has to come to it, then prepare something within the boot. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but yeah, like it's like if you can invest, if you can buy it, if you can buy a used set, a used pair of, son of, of sandlers, which is what mine are. They're they're a used pair, and they're still you know there's I had them resold once, and they're fantastic. Yeah, pop. But if you know if you can't afford that, then you know the, the Minnetonkas are are a good option. And if you're at the very bare minimum, a pair of Uggs will do you for at least a weekend. Yes, if you're just giving um, it a try. My knee-high Minotonks at the time, I don't know what it is at the moment, my knee-high Minotonks, I had black ones, which of course are not historically accurate, but but, um, <laughs> but they were $80. And I got my, my son of Sandler's are the knee-highs, and they still fit comfortably. They're amazing. Uh, those were hand-me-downs. I got that from our previous improv director, who I am eternally grateful for. Love him. Um... I got that off him for a hundred dollars. Yeah. Where normally uh, Santa Sandler's is going to be like three hundred or plus. Yep. So ask, look online. But ask, ask that question. Say, hey, anyone can can you help me figure this out? Mm-hmm. And so, I think that's go ahead. Oh no, no, go, go ahead. I think it's going to start on the next oh, bit. No. But no, yeah, same thing. So go ahead. So that's the boots, and that's honestly the most. Uh, it feels like the most important part because. Let's be honest, most medieval scenarios, all you really need is a good tunic. That's really all, like, beyond the boots, that's really all you will need is a good tunic. Right. So we're probably not going to delve too deeply into attire, since uh, that one can pre- pretty much be established for you. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, wool is king, linen undergarments, cotton's not a thing. <laughs> um, well, 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 I mean, we're, t- we're talking in the sense of thinking about, you know, you know, well, do I need like three undershirts? Like, no, you just need a good T. What I think the I think this Kyle's called tea tunic. T T tunic. Mm-hmm. And if you have a good T tunic, and I know a lot of a lot of the ladies in our cast do it, and I don't really like it works for them. Like they get they have that tunic, they have their dress, and they have a pair of leggings, like yoga yeah. leggings, freaking, uh, you know, beneath that. And because right. if you're wearing those knee high boots and you have a tunic that most tunic lengths, most historical tunic lengths will be below the thigh. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to see the pan- those pants a lot. <laughs> no. So there's, for reenactment specifically, there's definitely room for cheating. Mm-hmm. Um, for comfort, we'll say. So, uh, but yeah, no, uh, beyond shoes, which is really the only thing you need to be concerned about when getting into reenactment. Um, everything Especially else reenactment combat. Can very easily be, be uh, given to you if you cannot afford or acquire mm-hmm. uh, the rest of the attire or garb or weapons or gear, whatever. Just... But- just think about your boots. Mm-hmm. And, but again, that, that kind of falls into that same category. Ask to be like, hey, does, you know, does anyone have an old tunic? They're going to be willing to let me borrow or willing to sell to me for, you know, at, you know, for cheap. And sometimes they'll, they'll somebody be like, oh, yeah, I got this old tunic. I, I it's, too, it's too small for me or I don't like it anymore. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, like, I mean, we do blanket sales for our show. Um, I think we should do it more often outside of cast shows. Um, but like, I'm getting rid of my butted male shirt because mm-hmm. it's not historically accurate. Um, <laughs> but I'm giving it to another cast member right. who can use it for other purposes. Um, I've, I've actually, I'm filming a vlog of me fixing the, the, uh, shirt for them and then breaking down the extra chain mail for prop. Um, that'll be for like a medieval Monday thing. It's not going to be a regular thing, but if you want to see how that kind of goes about, um, I'll be uploading the vlog. Uh, next Monday, um, and those will be sporadic. Don't expect a weekly thing out of that. But um, so yeah, you, you know, people people do like blanket sales or go on Facebook. There are face. I'm I'm in several different Facebook groups that are part of groups that have nothing to do with what we do, but they get you in touch with the medieval markets and people that are craftsmen of medieval arts. So definitely think about. About Facebook groups. I hate Facebook. I don't want to be on Facebook, but uh, it's a great place for at least delving into those groups. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, that's another thing too. Like, depending on your group that you're getting involved with, they probably like we've talked about her. They probably have a costume director who will have these resources to help you get your stuff together. Exactly. Exactly. Or someone on cast will. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of what group to get into. There's also, you need to think of, well, what group do you want to get into? What event? So what we do is a festival. 
we do a month long. It used to used to be just what or what what one weekend, two weekends, um, but now we do a month long festival. However, there is also uh, shows that go on for way too many months, mm-hmm. um, and there's also shows that only do two weekends. Right? Mm-hmm. I wish it were two weekends. Um, that would be nice. Ugh. But um, although I love what we do, and yeah. I wish we would do it more. It's just it, it's very intense. It, it turns it turns the, that month into a very intense month. Yeah. I wish we had longer rehearsal months and a, sh- a shorter show month. Um, yeah. So so you've got to think about what group do you want to get into. So this is going to be a bit of a discussion here because we, our people, the people that we do the show with, are part of various groups. Now, I obviously host the Medieval Content Channel. This is my group. Um, that is all basically a handful of us that do the show, a handful of us that I trust. Um, that I'm very good friends with, that are all excellent minds and artists and actors and cosplayers, etc. There's like, what, 10 to 20 of us? Um, 15 to 20? So obviously most of us do the festival. So we do a festival, but there's also uh, just museum events. There's there's Viking festivals. There are... uh, I'm trying to separate festival from event. So an event would be something like... Gasparilla? Like Gasparilla. Gra- like I said, grab and go. Just kind of come in, do your thing, come out. You don't have to spend a month at a festival. But there are also <laughs> festivals. But there's festivals pretty much in every state, in just about every country. Um, look up all the festivals that are historical near you. And it go. And it's, if that's a festival that you want to do, do it. Uh, or if you want to do an event, like a museum thing, there's also those niche outlets. But we do a festival. Yeah, and I like I, it's honestly I do a festival. I I do the festival, and that's really all the the time I have to do. But I also do I try to do cosplay, and that's yeah. a whole that's a whole other kettle of fish. But like if you're a cosplayer, you probably you know already have a, an idea of what's going on in your area because you 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 meet people who talk about it, right? Conventions, yeah, yeah. Uh, of, of course, uh, th- those conventions would be a good place for an event too. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I brought up mythic. I brought up mythic LARP earlier. Um, the, recently, for the past couple of years at MetroCon in Tampa Bay, um, they have been running a dungeon crawl at, at the convention, and it's really right. cool. It's a really cool little event. It gives you a chance, you know. Yeah, it's fo- their foam boffer swords and shields, but it's just it's a neat little thing. And maybe you think like, "Hey, this is cool. We want to get into this more." So, a quick notation to add on to that: uh, you mentioned they use foam swords. Of course, the LARP uses typically uses foam. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, we do a fight cast, and this is different for every group. So, this is just our group. Our group uses real weapons. Our group fights real, with real, real stuff. Stage, um, stage combat. You know, weapons. They like. I, I think I've said it before. I could take my i my Viking sword. I could sharpen it and use it as an actual weapon, but I it's not sharpened. I received it blunted. Yes, so. mine. My Viking sex is not sharpened, but my my sword, Paul Chen, is rounded by design, which is historically accurate. But if you are not comfortable doing the fighting. Uh, or or being around swinging weapons like spears, axes, uh, swords, etc. Then that might not be for you. Some people are really good around horses, and so jousting is great for them. Uh. Um, that is also a thing to do if you want to prefer to do jousting or be uh, help out the joust team. You could do medieval festivals through jousting. Um, but if you're not comfortable with with being around or swinging swords, you should not be made to feel like you have to use a weapon or be around the fighting aspect of reenactment. If someone does say so, say, no, you have to be a fighter in order to do this show, then you don't do that show. Um, go find another show. We will take you in. You know, we'll adopt you. Uh, because we pride more in our improv than we do just the fighting. You know, we, we, we emphasize both, but really... The improv is the majority. Um, it's okay. So, you know, maybe find a group. If you do want to do fighting, find a group that'll ease you in. Find a group that takes very serious safety measures, like we do. 
um, take a group that will respect the, re- respect your respect your needs, honestly. Needs and space, and also I would say learning ability. Mm-hmm. So, um, from my experience, just doing our show because I only do our show. I just I just haven't had the time or money to do other shows, even though I want to. Like I want to do a Nerd. Viking festival. However, um, starting out. And we've said this before in the podcast, so I don't want to call out our group specifically. It's just the only experience I've had um, besides the pirate show, which is completely different. Um, Sometimes new people kind of just get tossed by the wayside by our group. And it's not intended in any way, shape or form. Um, We don't intend to be like, hey, you're new and you can't pick it up after two weekends. Well, too bad. Um, it's just because we only have like one or two months of rehearsal. Yeah, that and it's honestly a real shame. Ugh. It is. It, it it means that we only have this allotted time to train you before we have to immediately get into it. I wish, I wish we had a longer rehearsal period and a shorter show time so that we could actually have a solid month or two of actual training. So I think it would be best for new people if you could find a group or oh, you, let me let me finish my sentence I guess before mm-hmm. I think of other things. Find a group that meets like on the weekends like uh, HEMA does that SCA. Uh, uh, find a group that'll and kind of help you out. I know we do that as well but very sporadically. Yeah. Which is it's still open-ended but it's it's harder to get into. Yeah. Um, if you're if you're new, so but still, I mean, if you have the opportunity, do that because sometimes shows they're on a schedule. So if you if you want to take the time to learn, to get into the fight, then I would suggest come to us off season and uh, check us out and uh, join us for those weekend weekend uh, whatever we call them because um, <laughs> I, I don't fight training, sure. Um, but otherwise, I, I feel like there's, there's, there's definitely a time crunch with festivals. I don't know how it is with living history, but there's definitely a time crunch that causes it to be very difficult to train people, uh, both in terms of fight, specifically for fight, but also improv. You know, we have such a rigorous improv, but we, we really do more fight stuff with our show because it's two weekends, whereas improv is just like, what, four or five hours? Mm-hmm. So, despite how rigorous we do all of it, festivals come with a time crunch. So if yeah. you want to just lavish and learn, um, I'd still suggest doing it. But uh, find out in those groups or a group that does it on the weekends and maybe kind of ease yourself in and, and pick things up. We love it when people come in and they know things that we don't realize that they know. Or people that, that have done the show and they're new and they just didn't get it. Uh, or they couldn't. And then they, they come with us on those weekends. And they learn and they pick it back up. And, and then they get a fight the next year. Or, or they're so much more mature in their talent you know, the next year. So mm. think about that. Most groups do uh, off-time activities. So uh, try to find a group that does do that so that you can grow over the year. Because it really is fun to do throughout the year rather than just three months. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Although I will, before I let you go, say that it is a crying shame that we don't do the same for improv. You know, I feel you on that. So so we recovered, we covered, you know, actually getting into it and starting your, starting your garb. So I, I feel like we're going to have to do a part two where it's covering the kit. <laughs> yeah, and like I actual fair feel- experience. Yeah, but uh, people can provide that to you, or, or you can whatever. Um, that's up to your costume director yeah. and well, your, your group's rules. Let's put a pin in it, because I feel like there's a yeah. lot we could talk about um, when it comes to, you know, because it, it's, a, it's a character. It can also be a character thing yeah. that you want to hand, that you want to delve into, and, you know, and then there's, it feels like there's some things, you know, what to expect behind the scenes of a fair, you know? Yes. I think that would be a good discussion topic to add on to this. Exactly. Because speaking of, 
you know, and obviously I've got experience with a few shows in regards to this. Mm -hmm. So there is an issue with um, diversity and accessibility and toxic, we'll say masculinity or toxic <laughs> environments yeah. um, within, within reenactment and living history, specifically fight casts. Um, and I'm not singling our group out. I'm actually more thinking about the YouTube community. Um, there's a lot of people in the YouTube community who do specifically fight stuff, who of whom are are constantly making videos, you know, saying that diversity is is disgusting, that diversity isn't medieval, uh, diversity isn't historically accurate, uh, or you you can't do this if you're in a wheelchair or this and that. Uh, um, it's very disgusting. It's very obvious that these people are racist white supremacists. Oof. And I would say unsubscribe to them. Um, <laughs> but but it also is a thing. It is a very serious problem in groups as well. Whether mm -hmm. it's living history, whether it's LARP, whether it's reenactment like we do, or pirate shows, um, etc. I've experienced it in the pirate show we do. I've experienced it in our group. I've experienced it uh, in... Um, the Harry Potter thing that I've done. Um, I've experienced it trying to get into other stuff as well. So less so in our group. Our group, our group, our group is actually pretty incredibly diverse. Um, our group specifically is both diverse. However, uh, I mean, we want more people. We want people that, that kind of traces other parts of, of the medieval world because we, we stick to the same England and it's kind of like uh, a lot of us just kind of want more, you know? So yeah. we like diversity in our group. I'm yeah. pretty sure there's some people in our group that don't. And uh, well, that's too bad for you. Yeah. But, um, and I don't know who, but he, it's just a blanket statement. Um, because oh, yeah. it, that is part of getting into reenactment. Right. Um, so go to a group that, that accepts diversity. And yeah. you know, if you're a person of color, you know, watch you should out still for, be allowed to do it. Watch out for folks that try to use... Uh, Norse myths yes. and symbols, and claim that they are not neo. Uh, what's what's it? Because though sometimes they are. Yeah. So if for some reason, very specifically, the Viking groups. You know, in, in Viking groups, you find a lot of racist white supremacists or, or people that are very elitist. I you know, blame like, World War Two. <laughs> now I don't know any. Like I don't know any people that are that way in Viking groups or or. Medieval groups or pirate groups. Um, like I said, I've experienced it on one-off people. Um, I've mostly experienced elitism in all the groups that I've touched on. Mm -hmm. Yep. But um, and again, literally like just less than a handful of people, not the group itself. But um, also accessibility. If you are disabled, and I don't even like that word. I like I like to say differently abled, but we'll mm -hmm. say in terms of a blanket statement, some of that might be considered disabled. Mm -hmm. Um, you should still be allowed to do the show. If 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 you come rolling up to a festival in a wheelchair and they're saying, nah man, you're in a wheelchair, you can't do this. Roll over them. Because you should still be allowed to do it. <laughs> we we don't we have a we have a, a group of people and they're like a group. Like they're their own thing. Who come in and they're they're differently abled people, usually in wheelchairs, and they come dressed up as uh, the Game of Thrones characters. And they come out and they do like, you know, photo sets and, and stuff like that. And they do stuff with us. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, you know, I would see it for a group to be like, to have somebody who's, who's differently able to come, like somebody who's in a wheelchair who comes in and say, Hey, I want to do this. I, I want to be involved in this. It was a thing. It people, was people. There were still folks that, you know, they couldn't walk. There were blind folks. There were, it was still a thing in the medieval era. It's... I mean, geez, uh, King Alfred had possibly had Crohn's disease. Wow. So, so like, I would take that if, like, if I was the director and I had somebody in a wheelchair come and say they wanted to be involved, I would find a way to make it work. I would find, I would get a car, I would find a way to get a carpenter to make, to try and make a period wheelchair because it's something that people never see. And it would be just be fantastic to have as part of. The, you know what? The, the, I don't. I don't want to sound rude or disrespectful or offensive, but um, if you're in a wheelchair, you sit. Have, have get some help to sit down somewhere. You know, 
Um, although I really don't care if someone's in a wheelchair. Um, yeah. I don't care if someone's in a, a wheelchair and they're rolling around the festival. I don't care as long as you're involved. Yeah, um, that's, that's true as well. That should be true. That like, but if you are worried about accuracy, whatever, um, you could just you could just sit down somewhere. You know, sit down yeah. anywhere. Uh, like I remember, we had a person that was blind on our show, like legally blind. Oh, that was uh, and yep, yeah, I remember her. She basically just sat down on one of the hay bales and made made all day. Hay mail. Exactly. All day. <laughs> and then she, I, 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 I haven't talked to her in a while. I hope she had a good time doing it. Mm -hmm. But you know, it was she. She came and she tried to do it. You know what? It, she also tried to do the fight cast. Yeah. Which, now, granted, if you're blind, you probably shouldn't be doing fight cast. Um, but we we still are inclusive. You know, we still let these people who probably shouldn't, due to safety reasons, we still let them do it. Yeah. Through the training, because it's an experience that everyone should have. And you know, I'm trying to not cough. Um, <laughs> uh, because it is important. I think it, it, inclusivity, blah, 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 inclusivity, the word. Um, and diversity, I think, is very important in, in what we do. So everyone should experience what we do. But if you legit probably shouldn't be swinging a sword or being around sword swung, mm -hmm. um, there's still a, a plethora of things to do in reenactment, in living history, if you're interested. So don't let, don't let something like that stop you. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Because there is always something for you to do if you want to do it. Mm-hmm. Oh man, you know. A side note: I really would love to see somebody do a leper one year as a character. Like, I feel like that would be an interesting character to do. He was not around during this time. However, I believe our show did have someone that had one leg, and they were on fight cast. Oh no, no, no! Leprosy. Le well, I understand what you mean, but I'm kind of using a reference. Oh, okay. Um. So one, I, again, I, I don't know the details. I wasn't there. But the story from what I've heard is they had that character kind of have their leg chopped off. Oh, so no. the actual leg falls off on the board. Oh, and no. Because it's a one-legged person, <laughs> they still have the other leg. And the crowd is like shock or shooketh, as you will. And I think that's brilliant. Uh, that's, a, that's one way of, of, of kind of utilizing uh, something that someone might consider a disability and really being the star of the show. Um, but yeah, no, that would be interesting. A leper, I suppose. I mean, that is historically accurate. I don't know why we haven't. Mm -hmm. I guess it's just, you know, the the type of cast we have, I guess. Although I, yeah. guess, I, I could see a couple folks really pulling it off very well. You know. So that basically is a roundabout way in terms of how do you get into medieval reenactment? Specifically, since that's what we've done. Um, but it applies to everything. It applies to World War II, World War I, um, pirates, steampunk, Victorian, cosplay, whatever. Whatever you are interested in, just do it. Honestly. <laughs> just The do best it. advice, just do it. Because um, if you don't, you're never going to, and you're going to miss out. So hopefully we see you uh, on, the, on the channel, in the show that we do, or whatever. But until then... That has been another episode of our Talk Past podcast. And uh, I am NC, the host. And I am Red Iron Riot, a.k.a. the War Queen, your friendly neighborhood trash can. Indubitably. <laughs> Adios. Uh.